Hi there, this is Jim the Keys bartender coming to you from Key Largo. I'm not going to say the name of the episode anymore. Why? The number oh, not the number. Joe. I'm not going to say the number. I'm not going to say the number. Because uh, I'm here with Papa Joe. Say hi, Papa Joe, please. Hey, how are you doing? Bring that mic close to you like you love it, like it's a friend. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not going to, other than... No, no, no we don't have to go there. No, we don't have to go there with that. Um, uh, what was I going to call the episode? Three... Uh, what did, what, three no. software engineers walk into a bar because he did last night, but I'll, we're going to say that for a little later. I'm going to rehash something. Uh, we did a little uh, small audience sample, um, some marketing surveys on our unreleased episode that will be coming in probably next week sometime. Um, gay guy, straight guy reviews. And that's where I was, I guess, ham handedly uh, a subject. That I thought, oh, that'd be great. We'll just talk about. Who we, I think is attractive and ask you whether it's attractive and show different tastes that the tastes vary just as the same. Like there's no, I don't care what they say. Like a Time Magazine, this the hottest person in the world, whether man or woman, you know, it, it's not what you find hot. So, but we started doing it. But some of the sampling uh, of the people that listen to the show, um, the main thing was um, Jim sounds too gay and Joe is too straight. And that's uh, the one thing. And and uh, well, like I said, we're we're both fifty six years old. We do what we do. Our lives are what they lo- lives. What does it matter? Um, I mean, it's funny when you're in your twenties. I guess when you're in your twenties, it matters. It, it really matters when someone says something to me. If someone says that to now. Hey, that's well. Let's put it this way: you, it you may appear like you are a gay man, Jim, and I go. I don't really give a shit what you think I appear as. It, it mattered to us when we were in our 20s. Yeah, it did. Now, perhaps not so much. Maybe not so much in today's environment. Well, being called goodness. any, being called, uh, well, I guess in different countries that would be. No, if someone did. I mean, imagine if you were in. Imagine if you were. And said, you know, that sounds awfully. Are, you, are, are you gay? If you were in. It a, wouldn't be as <laughs> insulting uh, today. I would hope not. No. No, but it's not. It's just, it would just have. Those were fighting words. I mean, it's. I think it's. Um, Similar asking whether they're a believer, like and, and follower of God, and all that. Meaning, this is my what I choose to do with my right, life, right. And, and things like that. And not that it's necessarily a choice, because it, I, I believe that you're born one way or the other, or you decide, or maybe there's a thing the way the brain works. I mean, why do we? Why do we have to nail it down? And that's no pun intended. Why? Why do you have to nail it down that? Uh, the reason why someone is, it could be through birth, because I'll tell you, in the 70s and 60s and the 50s, and in different, let's say, let's pick the hardest place in the world, let's say right now, uh, Muslim countries and Russia, there's places that deny the validity of the homosexual lifestyle and say it's not a valid way of life. It's not a real way of life. It's an ab- aberration. The people still choose to live their life that way. Why would people choose to be ridiculed? A large segment of society be cho- chosen to live a lifestyle that you're going to be ridiculed and abused for in a country that denies it. And, and, and in the countries that accept it, it doesn't get bigger. It doesn't grow larger. It is what it is. There's a natural segment on it. Just like, just, just if, um, I, I don't know if that would work with the left-handed thing, but everything's made for right-handers. It doesn't stop people from being left-handed. Is that it? I think that's a good metaphor for it. Well, I always thought of it, um, you know, my problem is sometimes I read too much. Mm-hmm. And for those who don't read, shame on you. Yes. You know, sexu- human sexuality is is a, a curve. Yes. Um, th- there's no, there's no definitive. You are this, that, or it's se- sexual expression is a curve. So you know, between oh wait, wait, isn't it when you uh, a curve would be? I think you mean more of a gradient. No, I mean a, a curve. curve. Meaning, okay, so you went an inverse curve where it starts up and goes this way, or it goes along. An X Y axis from the inside to the outside. Well, let's put it this way. So, if you start with heterosexual, yep. and you have homosexual, mm-hmm. 
in between that, there is, you know, th- th- there's sexual behavior and sexual identity. Yes. And, you know, you have uh, bisexual. Mm-hmm. But then out of the bisexual, you have uh, bisexuals who may lean more towards heterosexual most of the time than not. And on the other side of that, you may have bisexuals that lean towards homosexual relationships than not. You, you, you have a, a, a varied array of people's sexual... A panorama, let's say. Or a Venn diagram, maybe. Yeah, you can look at it that way. A Venn diagram where... Uh, uh, I hate to call this thing outliers and stuff like that, but I think it's probably an even distribution across. There isn't a peak one. No, no, those numbers. There's an a peak one. I mean, I bet it can a consistent a cons- along the lines. Uh, but I guess the people I think sometimes when you hear about it and stuff, the people that get most disgusted by something they view as a aberrant behavior, and then and then there's a diff- difficult part is talking about people that are. Uh, why would you equate? They go wrong with the lunch. Why would you equate that as ever, someone's taste? Because then they throw in the real aberrations, pedophilia and bestiality and things like that. The true aberrations. Because in, um, in um, the natural world, they'll say, listen, how much sexuality occurs in penguins, in monkeys, in, in different, you know, it's, it's not, it's, uh, yeah, it's I mean, the board. I mean, it, it, Obviously, the larger numbers, if you're passing on genetic traits, would pass on naturally through the most reproductive quality. If it had gone, um, I guess, if it had gone single sex, because there are organisms that are just single sex and they can reproduce. Well, you know, we're not created or, um, or, or made or we have not evolved to be hermaphroditic. So... We, we can't no, no, but there are organisms. There are organisms, that, cells, and all that Clearly. stuff. And, and our evolution, mm-hmm. um, you know, it takes two to tango. Yeah. So that's fine. Then, and that's provided. That but, may have provided the preeminent the, the the reason why most people may be the one way. But I don't really understand what I don't understand about the people that kick back from it. Why would it bother you if you're, let's say, the people that are the most, the worst offenders, the, the straight guys that are the haters, why would you care? Why would you care at all? And yet? I mean, why would you care at all? Why would you, why would you care? You know, in China right now, and I would just listen to this, they had a one child policy from 1980 uh, till 2015. So that's 35 years. And they have 34 million more men than women. In some villages, the men outnumber the women two to one. Okay. Now, and whenever there's a competition, especially a small, think of a small town in America. You go to a school and there's 80 people in your graduating class. Right? Okay. And high school. And you get that's your choice in that town. Let's say you don't have access to the internet or anything like that. Let's say it's about 40, 50 years ago. That's your choice. If 20 of those guys are gay, that raises your chance. And the same thing, the ch- chances of women are the same percentage. But why would you care? Why would you care if someone takes himself out of the competition? Why do you care if someone takes himself out of the competition for what you want? And why would you vilify it, right? Why would you vilify it unless, unless you were so ingrained with the hate from someone else for some reason, it's just repetitive, that you'd have to attack it to deny your or your own feelings. There's an or. Yeah. Or. Or you've realized that society's ability to label shame and ridicule causing you and giving you license to hate is a great cover. And the louder you yell obscenities Mm -hmm. at any community, 
particularly this one because we're dealing with sexual preference, mm-hmm. you can go under the radar and never once have to deal with, one, your own feelings towards yes. the same sex and your own dalliances well, towards shit, the same your, sex. Your, your uh, self-hating... Uh, 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 experiences the things that you sh- you feel shame about that you necessarily shouldn't feel right. shame. What about. a great system society has set up, and this, unfortunately, uh, those rules, mores, and taboos are etched in the theisms of, of this world, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and they continue to be perpetuated. So those countries you talked about, you can add Central and North Africa to that. Uh, most troubling. Is yeah. uh, is is uh, Tanzania and Nigeria, who really had no comment on this issue? Yeah, and tribally they were indifferent. Some tribes had a history of actually honoring gay men and women in their tribe. They consider them a little special, um, until the American evangelicals got hold of them, and this is a recent. Well, a recent I mean, well, event. Uh, so what happens is I don't know you're saying it just the, the rationale behind it if 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 you're forcing someone that like I just saw this movie and it was uh, it, it, it 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 was recent release about the um the the uh, straight gay straight conversion therapy the Christian camps right. where they do that and you go well what the hell why are you forcing? I mean, it, it, is it the act itself that bothers you? Is it? I mean, what what does it matter? Because obviously, even a girl performing in in a conservative consume, even a girl performing oral sex between a man and a woman in some of these communities is considered a sin. Premarital sex is considered a sin, and all this stuff. But I mean, the really control? Do they have to really? Is it is it about controlling uh, uh, procreation? And controlling every aspect of life. I mean, but, and here, that's the reason why I thought the gay guy, straight guy routine. I said, what the hell? What does it really matter? If I can say, if I, I, why can't you legitimately just look at someone and say, hey, they're, find them attractive. And there's, you know, there's some, plenty of women, just because someone's a woman. And (laughs) I've had them come in before I was with Abby. I mean, just because you're not attracted to a certain woman. But the, that's just because you put it out on the corner doesn't mean but, that someone's going to pick it up. It's just going to pick it up, and and you're you're not attracted, so they go and use that part, and you go, well, that's not. I don't have a problem with you accusing me of that, but what you do is you're insecure. Yeah, yeah. You're insecure, and it goes so it goes it, it stratifies all the way down when you talk about religion and the culture and the thing. What does it really matter what a person does in their and. Uh, uh, Publicly or privately, when you go, I don't care what someone. Well, well, what if they're walking down the street hand in hand? What if they kiss? What does that do? Does, what does that subtract from you, your life? Does it make you feel bad that you're not loving to your wife or your your husband? Well, I've or heard everything not, from, well, how am I going to explain this to my kids? Well, because you're a parent and you get oh, to well, explain it to your Oh, well, your is. You're probably beating the shit out of your kid or abusing the hell well, out of your kids. Even way. if you're not. I mean, it's the, the lazy attitude is, I'm just going to avoid it. No, the proper attitude is, why don't you prepare your child? Because that child may one day come to you and say, oh, hey, I, you know, I like someone of the same sex. Even if they don't, why not prepare them to understand that? There are people in the world that are not like you. Why is that? Why would that be the most horrible thing that would happen well, in your you life? The, the tribalism of you know always needing a boogeyman, and then we can go back to the religious question, and then and, and then how that poison goes out into you know com- those people, communities. Those people. But if you are, if you can look at you you can look at your next door neighbor to your left and your right, and they could have a same similar magnitude. You could have a a two two family, two two uh, parents, you know, mother. Uh, a mother and father and two kids and they can be on either side and each family is going to be so different in their outlook in their belief system and things like that so what does it matter if across the street there's two uh, men or two women raising a kid there it's it's the, the differences between the way people raise their kids are probably I'd have to say primarily person to person not couple to couple meaning uh, a straight couple, gay couple, and something like that. There's right. plenty, plenty of that. So, uh, 
I think we probably both this, and we're going to both, we're going to speak about this. And I, I'm always a firm believer in saying, like, hey, it's not only they're they're trying to restrict the um, matter of fact. There was a ruling passed on that made it easier for people to get fired for being gay. Now they're not protected. Now the uh, the U.S. Uh, it's it's one of the Supreme Court. It's one, yeah. one of the questions the Supreme Court currently has right now. Um, in their since this administration has allowed this to uh, be, bubble up and and it needs Supreme Court oversight, the the regulations that the current administration wants to enforce is or to implement yeah. is that any subcontractors with the federal government n- do not need to protect employment for the LBGTQ community. Yeah. So. Uh, in this state, is a, as a right-to-work state, Florida has never had protections for uh, anyone in the LBGTQ community. You could be fired at will mm-hmm. just for being gay. And that's right now today. So a lot of people get threatened yeah. uh, when when the blowback is now we're going to fight this on the federal level. This case has ramifications for every state. Uh, to make every state then say, oh well, I, I hopefully if it comes out this way, we can't simply fire you because who you choose to love. And a lot of people have a big problem with that. Now go figure. You're doing the job. You've done the job probably for years. You're a good employee, but you come out and say, oh by the way, I'm gay. Uh, you got to get fired. Because the owner or the CEO or your administrator in state government has a particular Christian belief or religious belief, doesn't have to be Christian, uh, and, and you can't work for this company or you can't work for the state or, or, or local government. Um, th- th- this, is, this has been an ongoing problem. It needs to be resolved and put away. Uh, people that go to work go to work, and, and they do a good job. And if you if you if you can't find a merit based reason to fire someone, mm-hmm. then I guess they're doing a good job. Leave them alone. Who cares who they go home to? Because the odds are they're happier than you. They're better able to adapt because yeah. they've been doing it longer than you. Just leave them alone. And if and if as a result there's a hidden envy, and this is a means of payback of some sort. Uh. I hope they lose. The hidden envy? What's a hidden en- envy? I, I admire I admire you so much, but I can't bring myself to say it, so I'm going to hate you instead. Okay. I, you know, I think that's uh, a barrier to personal growth. Myself. Hey, thank you for the Coca-Cola from Mexico. Yes, uh, the Mexican Coca-Cola. Real Coke. Okay. Um, th- we could, hey, listen, I could do a whole show and stuff like that on this. But you know what? And uh, hey, listen, this is purely comedy and stuff like that. But comedy doesn't preclude um, talking about issues. We're lighthearted about it. So that's the reason why we did the gay guy, straight guy uh, thing. And then I did my little thing, you know, whatever. So this week, um, we're going to be taking a break in a couple minutes. I, since it's going so well, I think we'll probably go another six, seven minutes before we take our break. Maybe do 50 minutes today or an hour. Twist my arm. Yes. Okay, great. Um, Holly. My coworker, yes, you met yes, her of before. Course. Wonderful. She, she went to. Um, she's going to. Uh, she went to Delaware and she's going to California. During um, when I went to Poland, Holly worked her ass off covering for me, and it it's people. Um, to change the subject, your coworkers. I mean, especially in smaller companies, in a bigger company, you know they can find temps and things like that to kind of do what. You, you need to do but in a small company you just have like three four people to draw on when you know the person kicks in a shift or two a week and then the other one kicks in like four i mean i had they had seven shifts to cover for me a week uh so i really do appreciate it. so i I'm, I'm doing that and I, I, we miss doing our regular schedule so we're doing a day one but it doesn't stop me if I'm drinking in the daytime, if I did all my shopping, I'm not going to be driving. We're going to talk about that. But uh, I've been working doubles, and I actually didn't get stressed out or anything like that. The only time that happened was yesterday, and was slow. And then all of a sudden, about 10 people started coming. A group of five, a group of two, and group of uh, 
another two, and another two. So uh, maybe that makes 11. But at the same time, and then when that happens, and they want to eat at the same time, and drink at the same time, and they sit at the bar, and the keg kicks. Oh. Same time, the keg kicks. So I'm backed up there. Now, are you bringing your kegs up? I'm carrying the kegs. I have to go out back, grab the kegs and stuff. And this is a catch restaurant. When we're, oh, I mentioned that. I mentioned that. I'm the catch restaurant in Key Largo, and I want to mention something about someone coming in who... Uh, what we'll we got there. about we'll a listener? There. So, so had all this up. You have so you have to lug this. I got to go and get going in the back to the uh, walk in, uh, grab the keg, put it, uh, pull out the old keg, put it in something. Not a, not a chore, but it happened when all this stuff's happening. And 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 the health inspector walks in no. at the same time. What shit timing? I know, isn't it? It was amazing, and it was like almost as if they waited because. Any time before then, he could have done it, and it would have been like no problem. And we're thinking about this, and okay, my, um, I guess you know sometimes I'm a cool customer a under pressure. Set in. Holy shit! Yeah, it did. It, did. it really did. Uh, a, a lot of times in an extreme situations, very it's not that's a health inspector is not a dangerous situation. So my corporate uh, col- colossum or what do you call it? The medulla oblongata did not kick in with the protection, the flight or fright, uh, right, flight right. or uh, uh, fight, uh, flight instinct, or flight. Yeah. Uh, didn't kick in. So it's right in there in the middle. The higher brain thing goes up and it kicks it into the higher brain and it starts whirling around the thing. And I think this is my main job, my employer. I love my employers. I love the place I work. They give me a lot of freedom. A lot of flexibility. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of things I could do. Probably make double the amount, right? But very few places give me the flexibility to do whatever I want. Yeah, you can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on that. It gives you a lot of flexibility and stuff like that. So, I mean, and and a matter of fact, I wouldn't be able to do a show if I wasn't a bartender. Hey, so when this guy comes in, this this And he was not. Was he, like, did he come, do they come in with a He wasn't a dick. Yeah. Well, he has a big... uh, um, pad, meaning an electron e pad, okay, attached to his belt, and he comes in, and he's not dickish. He's just walking around or cuntish, but he does his things, kind of somewhat. It could be passive aggressive, and kind of, but it amps it up. It's worse for me if someone got in my face and started doing it. I'd be oh fuck, just like the military. He's perfect. He used to get yelled. <laughs> fuck that. That's great. Uh, but this guy's doing it calmly and. I said, oh, my God, he's matter of fact in this. And it's going boom, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And I have all these things going on. I'm trying to take care of all these people at the same time because I can't ignore them and think about the things I have to do. Uh, because when it comes to health inspection, you always follow the main thing. I wash my hands and do those things. But you're just thinking, I don't want to screw this up. I don't want to screw this up. I don't want to screw this up. So I'm doing that. And then somebody, and this is where it kind of failed, a regular customer of mine. But I think they were out of touch this day. Because I explained to them. I said, listen, the house inspector's here. And I get really anxious when it's happened. And I get distracted. And I may not be at my best for the next half hour to 40 minutes. But I'm going to try. And they started laughing. And they said, no, no, it really bothers me. It bothers me. I get anxious. And it's, it, it's, my, it's my one thing. I don't get the... I can chill when it's chill. And when in an emergency situation, I know you don't really... I'm great in emergency. I'm great in a disaster. Get, throw me in a hurricane or a fire. Or if you hear some gunshots... I'm really great because it right kicks in and like all that other stuff just falls by the wayside. It just happens. I'm not a superhero. I'm saying I'm just saying I can do it. I can deal with it. I'm yeah, not. But you got the, I don't the fall. government just walked into your building and they're going to inspect you. Yeah, and I'm going like this, and I'm and, and it's just I'm very in, yeah, no one uh, likes that. Very anxious, and I'm trying to ask them to please be considerate about it and stuff like that. And they start laughing again, and they go, "I just find it." And he said something that's funny. And I said, I'm glad my suffering <laughs> makes your day. I hope someday I can return this favor. And that just threw them over the edge. Now, I don't think I said something really wrong because I, I surmised this situation because you were being amused after I explained to you, right? 
I explained to this person, uh, you were amused and I explained to you, this makes me really anxious and it bothers me. And I explained to you before that, that mild stuff, I'm shit in the middle of it. Oh my God, just come in and yell and do something like that. I do get anked up and angry and stuff like that, but every, the adrenaline kicks in, I can handle that stuff. But the middling range stuff, I'm really bad with sometimes. Uh, that's because you can't stop and meditate. In the All right. So you had a customer or two or however many. No, just two. Two. It's a husband two. and wife. And, they, they, and the husband and wife, they said that. And I go like this. And I go, and I said, listen, I'm glad our suffering makes you, then my exact words, I'm glad our suffering makes you happy. I hope I can return the favor. And what was their reaction? I, they threw money down and walked out. Well, you know what? If you're going to give it, you got to take it. Yeah. And so shame on them. Mm-hmm. I don't think I should have said it. Well, the, it, I don't think you're I should a have. bartender. Of course you should have said it. You're a bartender. Yeah. If Look, you go into a bar that deals with locals, a restaurant bar that yeah. deals with locals mostly, yep. and you're as much a fixture there, Jim, as, as, as anyone. Mm-hmm. And they come in and they, they start with the back and forth with the bartender, yeah. the tongue-in-cheek, right? Yep. Uh, you've been to bars. I've been to bars. I'll, I'll mention one in New York. Uh, the Irish pub in Hell's Kitchen. Mm-hmm. It's the oldest bar in New York. Mm-hmm. Oldest working bar in New York. Mm-hmm. Say something smart to the bartender. You're going to get it right back. Yep. And, and the expectation is, all right, is that all you got? They're waiting. It's tongue in cheek. Yep. It's, it's expected. So if you're going to sit there and, and a bartender says, hey, look, this really bothers me, and, and you say something smart, and the bartender says, well, I hope I can repay you one day. And, and you go, this is what's wrong with I wish I could return the favor. I wish I could return the favor. what's wrong with everything. How dare you? And so I'm offended. Well, you know, you being offended doesn't mean you're right. Yep. It just means you're offended, you're childish, and now, you know. It, it, made, me, it made me question my response. You know what? I don't think you needed to request. Okay. I, I think it well, was Well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you signing with me on that, but I, I still... I mean, we we are our own best, crit, uh, worst critics. There's Keith. Oh, it's perfect. We're going to take the first break, and we're going to come back, and then Keith is going to be here. Okay? Okay. Yep. If you want to get your information about the Florida Keys straight from the locals who live here and the ones who love it here, we've got you covered. Visit 43keys.com as your source for everything Florida Keys. Sign up for our newsletter and you'll always be up to date on all the Keysy stuff that's going on down here. Go to 43keys.com. That's the number four, the number three, keys.com, and sign up today. Mike is hot. We're back. I'm here with Keith. Say hi, Keith. Hey, guys. Yep. Keith, the mechanic. And I'm here with Papa Joe again. Right? Papa Joe's been here the whole time. Uh, last night, uh, remember uh, a week ago, I remember they, uh, did I mention something about they equated at the bottom of the show on one of the listening apps, they said, if you like this show, maybe you like Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe you like uh, Tony Roberts. Tony, Tony, Tony Robbins, Robbins, Tony Robbins, yeah. the motivational speaker. And it's just like in the middle where I want to be, I want to be motivational. I want to be funny. And I'm not going to kick someone who are down. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that way. When there's some brutality, I'm not brutal. Um, it's not my style. I guess part of being it, it's never been my style, but, um, I was always concerned. I said, hey, where are we going to reach? Where are we reaching to people? What kind of people are we reaching? Well, last night, two women came in a bar. Uh, it's Christina and Lisa. And uh, two lovely ladies. And we're talking. And uh, I don't know exactly what Lisa does. And I think she's a business owner. But Christina is a city planner for a local village down here. I don't want to say the name. But she said it was all right to mention her. So um, she didn't say anything about her. I mean, she, she she seems to like her job. She's down here and stuff like that. And uh, she, um, we started talking, and Lisa started mentioning to some uh, uh, some people came in, and it, they're talking back and forth, and we're having a lively conversation, which we try to encourage at the bar. I want people to get along with each other, right? Yeah, Keith always. is a regular there. Uh, I try. I say, listen, this is the. You, I don't have to go and tell the rules of people. I say, be nice to each other, be fun, joke with each other, don't be too harsh. 
Don't be too harsh. Don't be per- take, do anything personal. So we're in there, and uh, Lisa mentioned something about someone. You got to listen to this podcast, blah, 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 listen to this podcast. And, and I go, oh, well, that's funny. I do a podcast. And the girl, Christina, came down in April of this past year to take this job at, in the Keys. And she says, you know, let me tell you something. And I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to tell the story wrong, but she says, when I first started with, knew I was coming down here, I started searching for podcasts in the Florida Keys. And you know where I'm going with this, right? Yes, absolutely. And yeah, I found your podcast, and I've been a listener. And she remembers Jenna and all that stuff. Uh, it's funny this week because I'm working, I mentioned previously, I'm working all these doubles, so I wasn't able to do the regular recordings on Tuesday. So, and she starts talking to me, and she goes, yes, I really like your show. And I said, when did you start listening? Up in Ohio. Wow. And I always assume when someone listens from someplace that they knew me or they knew someone else or they're listening on their phone and they have a phone number that's still listed in Toledo or something like that. I didn't realize that people were doing searches and it's coming up. And that was my first validation that someone actually outside of social media and friends and stuff started listening on their own accord. And she didn't say anything. And she said, well, one thing she said, uh, what is the best application or place for me to listen to you so you make the most money? And I said, the best thing you could do is to become a subscriber and recommend me to your friends. Absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. The more listeners we have, the more I, my, I envision that we can incorporate and this is for anything, uh, brew, breweries and, and liquor right into that because we are drinking during the show and it's called Keys Bartender. It makes sense. It's not called Keys Sobriety, which would only be like three people uh, here. That'd, that'd be, be the total thing. Now, my, if I did Keys Sobriety, I, I mean, there are some, the sober community is very strong here in the Keys, but considering you only get like maybe like two, three percent. Uh, penetration and stuff like that. I don't think it's so a sober bar. I guess that would be if I do go back, it'd be a sober bartender, Listen, a sober two, keys two bartender. Three, two or three percent penetration is not good for anything. Oh, you're right. It's just a, <laughs> that, it's just a tip. It yeah. is it's just, just a tip. Just a tip. That's right. Just a tip. And and then I asked Christina, why do you why did you look for a show? Well, I was trying to get a feel for the keys and stuff like that. And uh, you were looking for information on the keys, and I go, um, I'm thinking, well, and now after that, it was kind of busy last night. We had a great night for Wednesday. I don't know why. It's not a normal night I work there. But we had a lot of people come in. Um, I'm thinking, what did you learn? And I thought back on all the old shows, some of the things we did. And you could say, you, if you remember any episodes, you could chime in if you want. And I'm just not challenging you or anything like that. You realized uh, some people have their dentures held hostage for money down here if you listen to our show oh yeah there's a story about a woman had her dentures stolen by a boyfriend and held hostage for 500 bucks oh that's awesome that came into a bar that really happened and um, now Christina knows this really happens this stuff really happens I'm not making this shit up I, I make I make stuff up but I tell people it was made up but, but this one uh, a lot of grown men live with their parents she learned that on her own well a lot of grown here, men that down here is the right thing and they always do that Really? Yeah. Like right many pe- people are in their 20s, 30s, living with their parents. Yeah. Oh, some women... Yeah, well, it's expensive as hell down here. Yeah. Uh, some women do a lot of personal hygiene in their vehicles. And I'm hearkening back to the woman in Key West that uh, was shaving her vajayjay did I, did I on the way you today. Did I that that was my trooper that stopped that? that oh, it was a trooper. And she was... Oh, okay. Wait, you know... That was my trooper. Your Honor, can we have a sidebar? Absolutely. We're going to do the sidebar right here on that, and we're going to come. We're going. To, I'm going to footnote this, not footnote, bookmark it. We'll get back. Let's hear about it. Well, first of all, if you want to read a great book that takes the traffic stop that really happened and turns it into this wonderful story, then Razor Girl by Carl Hyacin. Okay. Um, he literally took the headline and created a story, which it, it, and he did a fantastic job, and I highly recommend the Carl Heisen was a newspaper man down here to became an author, or he's still a uh, newspaper man and an he, author. He may, be a, he may still be he was a journalist with the Miami Herald, uh, but he was a journalist and, uh, um, and, and started writing. It probably I read a couple of his books. Late, late to mid he, And he uses real 80s. stories about people 
Try, you know, oh, dumping still, bodies yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Everglades. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is Trooper stops a car for speeding. In Key West. And, in uh, key. And, and yeah, toward the lower well, keys. Well, I mean, in real thing, yeah. Lower Keys, not quite Key West, uh, but not far from it. Right. And uh, there's a woman uh, that has her skirt uh, hiked up to her waist, and, uh, and she's going to town on her... Uh, we can call it a beaver. Uh, with a pubic razor. area. She's, yeah. she's shaving her pubes. Yeah. And uh, so the trooper who walks up to the car asking for a license, registration, insurance, she and never stopped. Simple. She's just still shaving. Yeah. And his eyes get big, and he doesn't know what to say. And if you know this, I'm not going to say his name, but if you know this trooper, uh, these types of incidences kind of cross his bow often. So wait, did he tell you what she looked like? Did she? She didn't get arrested, did she? She got a ticket. She got a ticket for speeding. No, but was she like? Was it traumatic? What he saw? No. No. Was it pleasant? Yeah, like it was quite said, pleasant. Oh really? She was an attractive woman. A, yeah, attractive woman. Oh wow. Maybe okay. her face had a little, you know, miles on it, but overall, an that was a good shape. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, so, wow. He, he, he asks, of course, what are you? She goes, well, I mean, I'm shaving. What else do you think I'm doing? I, I have a date. I bet there is no, this can't be a law that you can. Well, he writes her the ticket. Uh, for speeding. She, for speeding. She, she he, signs she's not the, the driver. What's that? She's the driver? She is the driver. She is driving and shaving. Oh, I thought she was a passenger. No, no. I thought she was a passenger. That's what makes this so. Oh, that's distracted because, driving. Clearly, it's distra- it's, it's It's what they call uh you know, the high level of careless. There's two forms yeah. of careless. This would be uh, that careless. But so he writes her, sends her on her way. Uh, she didn't think getting a ticket was right, by the way. Uh, it was unfair. But anyway, and then I get a phone call. Unfair. Sorry. What? You're not going to believe what just happened. And considering who it's from, I, my response was, well, yes, I will believe what happened because it's you who's calling me. And then he tells me, and of course we end up with a big laugh. And uh, the next time I managed to get down to the Keys, with, with, within a few days, down in the southern part of the mm-hmm. Keys, in a few days, uh, I met him for lunch. He told me the whole story. He was actually kind of, I won't say in shock, but he was shocked that her she just didn't budge. She just kept shaving. And in telling the story, um, you know, the deputies heard the story, mm-hmm. and uh, and then eventually. Uh, the local Keys newspaper. Yep. Uh, and it went to national news. It picked it up and it immediately, well, it went to the Herald. And then, of course, the Herald is part of uh, the McClatchy News. And then it went it went national. Um, and so it, it was like the story that just wouldn't go away. And then <laughs> Carl Hyacin writes this book, which I had, I had to, you know, a couple, what, two years ago, I had to read it. it it was just an entire story. And being a writer myself, you mm-hmm. know, he, he creates this story. Wait, I didn't know that. We're going to we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to talk to that further. He creates a story from the headline. Yeah, which okay. you, and he did wonderfully, by the way. So we're we're going to have to book note, uh, 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 put a bookmark in there and uh, remember that. I, that's, I just learned that about you. What? That you're a writer, too. Yeah, well, I have one book in the works uh, with the publisher, so hopefully soon it comes out. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that'd be great. Well, well, you're, you're talking about that, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you know what? Hey, I'll work with Joe. Joe's my in right there. Well, we'll push your book as much as we can right here on there, as much as we can, and we'll push it as much as you want, I guess. Okay, so we got the... That is amazing. Um, okay, well, we're going to have to continue that. We'll yeah. talk about the well, uh, the thing. So I'll finish this stuff about what this girl learned. Christina. Yes. And um, a lot of people have no choice but to use a bike down here. She'll learn that. You'll eventually get busted if you drive drunk. I think that's pretty much it. And some older women like to curse a whole fucking lot down here. Even down. I had it during Martini night. I have some regulars coming and says, "We're old whores." 
<laughs> and we like having martinis. That's awesome. I was just like, it sounded like a Saturday Night Live. It sounded like an old, uh, it sounded like a, a even more outrageous Saturday Night Live skit. Yep. We're old whores. And I told him, I said, if you uh, want a dirty martini, do it, uh, you, know, you know, if you say, hey, get me a dirty martini, bitch. And that means lightly dirty. And get me a dirty martini, asshole. That's medium dirty. And get me a dirty uh, martini, motherfucker, cocksucker. And then I know it's like bay water. So I know that. <laughs> and uh, I guess that cursing thing by uh, older women may not be unique only to hear, but those other things are kind of unique to hear. Uh, but that's just kind of fucking crazy. We besides those three people that um, those two women that came in, we had three software engineers come in. Very very nice guys. They're biking down. Two of them are biking down to uh, Key West, and he's talking. bicycling or motorbiking. Uh, bicycling. Oh, good for them. Bicycling. Uh, three, uh, th- two of them are bicycling. The others uh, driving the support vehicle. And I said, "Hey, well, how are you doing? Are you driving ahead and then stopping, or are you tra- lagging behind? Like, you know, that's what I would do. And I would stop and wait, and then drive up to him instead of driving back. You know, save more gas, right? Yeah. If something happens mm-hmm. to him." When you're ahead, how are yeah, you going to know? Yeah, well, you got to drive back. Well, you got to drive back, and well, you know, you, you, and if you on the seven mile bridge, you definitely can't mm, d- mm. do that. You got to come up behind them, but you could just st- like you would. They could, he like could stop at the bar, have a drink, and then catch up to him. Oh yeah, that's good. I, after key, I just had a drinky thing. Yeah. yeah. Just have that drinky thing, right? Yeah. Oh, that's good, Keith. Giving great advice to our people once again. Stop it. Hey, have one a, drink. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Maybe have... Oh, by the way. One drink at I'm 10 supposed bars. to... Um, <laughs> uh, the zombie rides in two weeks. I think two weeks to the day in Key West. A zombie ride down in Key West yep. for uh, Fantasy Fest. And I got to make some calls, I think, to somebody. Oh, is it that time of year again? Yes, it is. Oh, Where shit. fat, naked people get body paint on their bo- oh, uh, bodies so they can show their private parts. And there's some attractive ones that and they're hiding tough. and they're hiding their body parts. So it's, it's a tough. crime and a crime in, in two directions are going on. The people that shouldn't be naked and the people that should be completely naked. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, if oh, there was one a couple uh, last year. I was looking at some photos, and I think someone had attached a, a real realistic looking prosthetic penis because this thing was monstrous. Yeah, yeah, and and not flaccid. It was, but it wasn't turgid or erect. Is turgid a real word? He was. He had a semi. Yeah, se- semi. It was kind of, but um, it wasn't his. What a it was shame. more of a strap on. But the guys there, and there, and there's all strange people in this shop. It looked like they just got body painted, and they're all sticking it in their mouths and stuff like that. And they go, besides the thing that, no, no, I'm not talking about the thing, but a rubber thing that someone else had in their mouth, you're putting in your mouth. It's like, dig, hey, put this straw in your mouth. Here, you straw in your mouth. Put this straw in your mouth. Yeah, not. I'm not talking about the thing. Hey, look it. I'm taking it from a different direction. Uh, <laughs> not to be rhyme with direction. But but um, in Jim in Key West they call that trolling. Oh yeah, they do. Okay, call trolling. Yeah. Okay, put that mic next to your mouth when you talk. Right. You got it. So you call trolling, Keith. Yeah. Well, we're gonna get to you there. You keep on commenting because I got something for you. Oh, it's not, it's not, I'm not putting you on the spot. No, it was that's what all right. We talked about already. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking. Okay, the software engineers were there. Uh, so the two older ones are biking. One's doing support, uh, driving along. And one of the guys said a really interesting comment. He said he's telling people he works with what he's doing. And it's a and sounds like a fantastic trip. We're going to Miami, flying into Miami, getting into um, Homestead, or I guess going down to Homestead, taking their bikes, blah blah blah. And I, I think they're from Tampa area. And I don't think they rode their bikes all the way from Tampa because that's a fucking long ass ride. But uh, that would be a week or so. But they, um, yeah, I'm sure they rode the van down here and got in here and started at the top. And uh, he said, when he told them about their amazing trip that they're going to do, people, he says, every time he does one of these trips, he does, he gets people to say, you know what you should do? You know where you should go? And he goes, well, you know what? Why don't you plan your own trip and I'll decide if I want to go on it. He took it kind of personally because he wants the people, I can understand that when people say the amazing trip and say, that's your trip. You're going to do what you're going to do. Give me credit for knowing what I want to do. I know you want to give me some information you think you have on it, but you haven't done it. You know? Now, I imagine he, 
the, what he was saying is people that aren't travelers like this guy, they're giving him advice. And he goes, well, fucking you plan a trip. I'll decide if I want to go on it. And you can go on a trip that I'm doing. Yeah, it's kind of rude, especially if, like, if someone's not been here before and they say, hey, you know what you should do? Yeah. Um, you should go and fuck yourself. That's what you should yeah, do. Yeah, that should be the response. <laughs> and go and fuck yourself. With a smile and, and, hmm. walk and go your way. But yeah, that is kind of rude. As yeah. opposed to saying, hey, have you ever been to the Keys? Well, yes, I have. Hey, do you know any good places I could go? Yeah. That would be a little yeah. different. You got to go to Square Group or you got to go to No Name uh, right. Pub or something like that. Oh, stop by Irish Cabins. But, okay, so that was eventful. They have seen these three people happen just so, you know, and Christine will know these stuff happens now. Two guys come in late at night just to eat, have a couple. One has a beer, one has a drink and a, and a uh, Bailey's. And we're sitting talking. We're sitting talking. I'm working, cleaning up, and they're sitting talking. And we got in conversation. Uh, I mentioned when I graduated, and the guy said, I graduated, and then I graduated. We're all the same age. We're all 56 years old. And I just realized, we have guys, just like yourself, you start comparing. What'd you compare? Where you go. Where you are. It just in life? In life. And you're like, you're looking at him, stuff like this. I'm going, well, this guy is this you know this shape this guy has this much hair this one has that and I go like this I say well get me the fuck out of this loop you know because one guy said oh look at that. I lost all my hair and all that stuff I'm like, hey man it doesn't mean anything you're in good shape and stuff like that and the other guy probably wasn't a little, he looked like he looked a little younger than me and I always thought I was like when I was 56 I thought I looked pretty good and then he said fuck it I, I just saw that it, it confronted it right face to face same three white guys are in a bar and same age, similar backgrounds. It seems like similar education. We're talking the same things. We're not far flung. And uh, and you think, wow, it becomes that comparison. If it was a if it was an Asian dude who was younger and a girl and this and that, you would never try to make that comparison and stuff like that. But you just put three of the same people, and I think it's automatically one of those things. No, we, we, we're young. never going to get away from this. This competition? No, it's, it, it, it's it's a reflection of one's self image. I mean, we're we're always comparing to validate ourselves. Yep. Hey, I'm okay. I don't look that bad. Look at this guy, or maybe even you know what? I should probably change this because that guy looks really good for the being yeah. the same age. There's a con- there's this constant mirroring going, yeah. on. and it's not necessarily bad. It could become bad. It could become a fixation. Yeah. Um. But it also, it, it could be humbling. And as long as you take it, it, the better understanding you have of yourself and the fact that you're yeah. able to talk about it and, and you are cognizant of it, yeah. um, it, it, it's a very grounding thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not a sign of high narcissism mm-hmm. or anything. Uh, it just means you're normal. Yep. Yeah. That's all. And probably with a pretty healthy outlook on yourself and with and others. Well, I... I- I, in the end of the day, when I came in, I said, I feel really good where, where, where I am. And I I'm, I'm, feel good with the people I associate with. And speaking about people I associate with, yes, yes. Keith, last week, and it was great. You started mentioning me. And you know what? I have to apologize because I didn't really pay attention. Because you started talking about, I, you mentioned where you lived and I got the area you lived. But I didn't focus in on what you said. And you talked about your landlord being okay with it and all this stuff. And I go, well... Why would I want to do a podcast from where you live? And he goes, uh, like this. And he goes, what do they have? Do, what, what would they gain from me doing a podcast? It's not like it's, it's an apartment building or some apartments. Why would they gain from it? And then Keith goes, well, it is an escape room. And I go, oh, fuck. I should have focused in. It's a kingdom escape room. It's in yeah. Key Largo. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and Keith lives above there. And that's fucking exciting. And that's because I was half ass, And that's why I need to apologize to you because I didn't really pay attention to you. See, you thought I was going to do something to embarrass you and stuff like that, no. didn't you? No, not at all. Oh, you knew that? Okay. Well, that's got to be an I'm interesting gonna, night. I, I, living above and I said, to Kate, I said, if you have to invite a girl over, because that's what I used to call my apartment. But what a great The escape room. <laughs> you, know, you know, they come in there and go, hey, well, what we want to do, and supposedly the, did you men- talk to the owner? Yes, he ain't gotten back to me. Okay. Well, Keith I seems to think, card. and I don't mind, I don't mind going out on a limb, but I think I'd like to do it. The way I'd like to do it is the people that go into the escape room have to be drinking. And well, they, they, they probably 
are. No, no, they have to be drinking there. before because I want them at a certain level. Now, maybe I'll need to bring in a, maybe we'll all do it, except for you don't drink. So that'll be good. Well, you, you could be the person. Sober guy. Yeah, one sober guy. You could do the podcast. He could do the show, yeah. We could do the show, and then we maybe, I think we'll have to do the powered mic. I don't, I would like to. I'd like to figure out how to put the power mic in. I think it would overpower the other. So you're saying do the podcast from an escape room. From the escape room. While trying to escape from yeah. the escape room. Remember, while I, did, the, I did a podcast. While drunk. I did it. I did a. Or at I least did, tipsy. Yeah. 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 That would be. That would. That one. I, well, I'd probably laugh my ass off, but I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And you don't. You've been in there? No. Good. I haven't been there either. No. So good. Okay. So the next person, we don't, as long as we get another person in there. So we got Keith and I, and maybe Jenna or uh, Tyler's very crafty. He's crafty. Jenna, I mean, Jenna would be funny. Jenna would be funny too. Yeah. Uh, you think Tyler's not that crafty? You think he could get the no, clues? No, no. Well, first of all, I think Jenna. And, and we can bring we bring Damien and Damien and uh, I'd have Damien and you as commentators. Okay, Damien, you as the commentators, uh, we will, um, and and then you have to call us over. We'd all come over and do it. And we'd have no, to we do could the, just give the uh, the play by play, like hey, yeah, no, no, call us over and tell us. Say, hey, what's what, your reasoning? What are you doing? What are you doing? What's your reasoning? What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we do. So you can arrange this. You think maybe? I, I gave him a card, so if he calls him, we could set that up. Oh, that would be that would I be. Thought, cool. I, Told him about it, and like you said, he didn't pay attention. He thought I was going to take women to my room and not let them escape. But oh, I explained no, man. to him. Well, we could do that, too. If you, I mean, well, I explained no, I didn't to know you. that. No, I didn't, I didn't think that right away. Wait you a thought second. about it. No, no, no. We could find what I some, thought is, we could find how, do you invite, razor, how, do you invite, how do you invite someone to your apartment if you say you live above, above an escape room? I didn't say... That you would <laughs> trap a woman in. You know what, Keith? I never intimidated that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. However, I mean, it's one of those. However, it's one Keith, of those there are some people. I told you about Danny Dang, right? The sushi guy. Yeah, he did. Danny. What did he do? Um, I, mean, I may have had it you know, on the previous uh, podcast or he said it to you personally. Well, the uh, there was a guy. Okay. It was, someone it was in the Encore. No, it was in the Encore restaurant. He was Danny Dang was the sushi guy. He was a Vietnamese American. And he had, it was funny because he has a Vietnamese accent, but he also had a South Carolina accent. Oh, goodness. He goes, dang. And all of a sudden, he's like, he, we were right near the sushi bar. It was right when you walked in the front door. And there was sushi bar and then my bar. I'd be standing in a register and stuff like that. And this beautiful redhead walks in and he goes, Dang, Jimmy, that girl's so hot. <laughs> and I'm like, and she's like looking forward, like, oh, I can't fucking believe this. And I'm standing there like this. I'm mortified. So I'm standing stark still. So she's got to be like getting an otherworldly experience walking by us. But he also would say shit like, Jim. It's going to be a hot summer. Hot. Hot. So when we talk and stuff like that, we, uh, we talk every so often. And one time I talk about girlfriends. I said, since you seem to have a lot. He goes, Jim, you seem to have a lot of girlfriends. I had a girlfriend. I got in trouble. And I go, what was your trouble? He goes, well, I, had to, I went to jail because of her. I said, why'd you go to jail because of her? Well... She tried to break up with me, but I wouldn't let her out of my house. So they call that imprisonment. Yeah, I think I said so. you had a adult. <laughs> you said you had a deadbolt and you locked a woman in your apartment. He goes, "Yes." I said Danny, you can't do that. I mean, Jesus Christ! I, Danny, I never even thought of doing that. So, uh, but that guy was a, a fucking amazing. What, what was my point? The, the escape room, the fucking escape room, and um, so we. That that's what I thought about when you uh, when you said the escape room. And I said fucking Danny Dang, and he he says, "Oh, I want to do something with you and stuff like that." I know you want to do with me. You want to take me over your apartment and lock me in your fucking apartment, so you have a friend. It'd be <laughs> awesome if you took your apartment, set it up as an escape room. That's what a lot of guys' apartments are like. That would that would now one that would be scary for, you know, the perspective. Oh yeah, the first date, date person. Yep, yep. Yeah, that might be a little intimidating, but not if you when told you them see up front, a lot. Said, hey, I have an If you see room. a candy, if you see candy, flowers, and all this shit, 
make sure you have an escape path and make sure you have access to the key to the doors. Or date a woman named Candy. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> okay, listen. Um, I think uh, we, we've done 54 minutes. We could go on forever, but I think it's perfect timing. To, and it, Keith, uh, I'm leaving you to put on that stuff. And also, you know what, Keith? I think you're the man to get us to the, into Lover's Boutique, maybe. I can do that. You think you can? Yeah. I think that would be pretty awesome. I would have a field day. Well, no, 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 no. Just say, let's be careful. Um, if they do listen to the end of the show, tell, we'll listen to it. We'll tell them what episode number it is. Um, that um, what we'll do is we will not be invasive in the people, which is funny. I'm not trying to say invasive. Oh, We're going to be up there. Oh, I meant that. No, but we'll set up a table and we'll talk to them. And if the person there wants to talk to us, they can talk to them. We won't use any names. And the people that want to come up. Now, what I feel... It's that we'll be able to do probably 30, 40 minutes ourselves, but we're going to need, in order to make it worthwhile, a couple people to come up and talk to us. Because I want to do a little segment called What's in the Bag. And that's going to be great. And you know, I don't care if someone fucking steals it because I know how I'm going to handle it. You don't know how you're going to handle it. You got Some people, I don't mean you, I'm talking about whoever's out there stealing this shit and started trying to do it. I do it on my own. You're not going to hear it by then. You're probably not going to pay attention. And by the time it's out, it's over, and you're just you're just copying. Do your own shit, right? I'm, I'm no, but that's that's awesome. First of all, there shouldn't be a stigma for having, you know, a sex store. I mean, people do what they do in their private lives, and it's a lover's boutique. A lover's boutique. Call it whatever you want. Call it a fuck shop i don't care what you call it people uh want toys and want to explore their own sexuality with their partners you know what more power to you you want to dress up keith you're nodding a lot that's awesome so it's up to you i'm just taking it in you know they have a lovely uh, fantasy fantasy fest around the corner and this will be released and stuff like that so uh, i want to mention a cash restaurant in key largo to come there it's at 102 on the ocean side come and see me i'm there a Many days. Come and see me on Mondays, Wednesday days, Monday all day, Wednesday all, uh, Wednesday days, Friday all day, Saturday, uh, some Saturday nights and Sunday night. Uh, and then sometimes like this week, I'm there every fucking day except for today. Um, but the Lover's Boutique, they have a lovely selection of costumes. Yes, regular, regular costumes. Stuff you may want to wear at Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. So, well, or, you know, just... If you're not, obviously, yeah, if you're going to get body pain, you're going to be showing your JJ penis, nipples, whatever stuff. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. Well, as long as it's painted. You know what it's something? What if you paint it? What if you paint it? What if you paint something Mm, and paint it, you paint it a different color underneath, right? Let's say blue. Okay. And then paint skin tone overneath. And the what? Skin tone overneath, uh, above it. Overneath, overneath, overneath. Where'd that come from? I don't know. I think I'm from another planet. Okay, so your nipples say, yeah. So paint someone tell you you paint the whole thing black. Let's say you paint your upper torso. You're a white person. You paint your upper torso and your balls, everything black, right? Okay. And then someone paints over it, Caucasian st- uh, skin uh, tone. Skin tone. What you yeah, uh, that's still covered. Yeah, but covered with the caveat of obscuring. Okay, well, there, there. Yeah, man, he's like a fucking lawyer. First of all, well, I worked it for five years, so uh, men's jiggly parts um, have to be covered. You can't go out and you know swing the dick. Vagina, vaginas can't, don't have to be shaved and painted, and as long as they're obscured, that's fine. If they have to kind of a uh, a loose, there's not many people that can uh, that, that get away with it. You know what I mean? Most, most everyone we hand T-shirts to. Like a sloppy roast beef sandwich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you know what I'm talking a about? A couple of provolone. Messy, yeah, no. messy taco? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that should never be seen. Italian sub? You know, and, and there's, some, uh, there's some male parts. A tuna, tuna. Normally I'd be a very... Uh, tuna hoagie. I, I'd admire certain, you know, but there are some that you look at and go, you know, God was not kind to you. Um, they should always be hidden. But we used to give out T-shirts. And uh, if you didn't, if you lost a pasty, crouching nipple, hidden penis. What a name for a book, huh? Yeah, isn't it? instead of crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Okay, 
So you just hand them T-shirts and say, "Cover that up." And cover it. But you got to remember, there, you know, there's, it's an, it's an adult driven. I know. Every t- every every time a year, I see some foreigners come down. They have some kids and go, "Oh, we're going down." We're, I mean, I want to talk about this next time. But um, every so often, you'll run into someone. You're talking to them, and it's oh, their English is impeccable, hey, we gotta do a, we gotta, and you don't hear an accent. We had to do a fantasy fest story episode once. I wanted to do, I wanted to do it down there, but I didn't get my. Well, you can still version. do it before the event. I want to do it from down there. You gonna be able to pull that off? I don't know. That's what she said. But a bing boom. Bing boom. You well, think you have enough time? No, 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 no. You think you have enough time? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be able to pull that off? I don't know. I don't know. Let's get get away with the puns while we're at it. Okay, this is Jim the Keys bartender. I'd like to thank Papa Joe. Hello. And Keith, the mechanic, the time from his busy day, lunch hour, to come here and trick his apple juice. Yep. Or from kindergarten, right? Yeah. You get any cookies with that, man? Orioles. Orioles cookie. Okay, that's good. Well, hey, I'd like to thank you for listening. Talk to you later.